Hi, my name is Mike Hoglin. I'm a producer, remixer and DJ and I release my work on labels like Enjuni Beats and Amada as well as my own label Noise Music. Over the years I collaborated with many artists including Above and Beyond, Lunch and Alex Morph to name a few and I'm also a course developer and tutor here at Point Blank and you are watching Production Analysis. So we're into part two of the production analysis of Motorcycle as the rush comes. In part one we've set up the main theme of the track with the riff being sent to a bus where it goes through a bandpass filter before hitting the stereo delay with compression and then going through the space designer reverb. So let's take a closer look at the bass line next. I'm just gonna skip back to the original track where we've got that typical arrangement where after 32 bars of mixing you get to hear the bass line come in. So that bass line is following the chords of the riff and it's a very nice wide and stereo kind of saw wave sound. And I think we can recreate this using the Logic Retro synth new edition that comes with Logic 10 and it's actually a very nice emulation of 70s, 80s kind of synth with the analog being a bit like a MOOC. Same goes for the sync mode here. But then you also get the wavetable synth very much in the style of a PPG and the FM synth is kind of like a DX7. But let's go with the analog mode. And I'm actually gonna load up a preset as a starting point for our bass sound, punchy electro. Sounds like this. Very nice round uh, analog sound using just one of the oscillators even. But I'm gonna tweak it a bit more and add a little twist to it later on. For now, let's just play in the notes that we need. Let's load up the virtual keyboard again as well. And it's that movement again here from the G to the B for the most part of the track. So that's all we need for now. Let's loop the region and we can quantize it. Let's check it out in the piano roll. That's looking good to me. Let's go back to the synth. In Logic 10, you can actually resize synths or plugins, you can make it nice and big. Now down here under settings, there are a few extra functions. I'm gonna use voice detune and increase that a little bit. And that actually increases the stereo width too. this obviously it detunes it as well so don't overdo it but I'd say a setting around 40 or so makes it nice and stereo but I reckon in the original track there's actually a fifth going on in the bass too so let's solo it for now and rather than playing in the fifth I'm gonna use the second unused oscillator here and tune it plus seven semitones and now that note is actually hitting the same note as the fifth underneath the main note in the riff. All we have to do is adjust the balance between oscillator one and two. We hear the fifth come through more when the filter opens. Like this. But I want to add just a little bit of it to the main note. Okay, so let's play the track again. And here's a quick mixing tip for you if you have a bass line like in this example where some of the bass notes share the same position as the kick drum like here on every downbeat what I do is load up a compressor on the bass channel 
and we use that compressor to duck the bass line against the kick drum. So here in the sidechain window we choose the kick as the sidechain trigger, fast attack and fast release ratio something like 4 to 1 and then with a threshold setting like this we duck the bass line against the kick drum by 4 dB with every kick. It's not an obvious sidechain uh, compression kind of effect uh, that you would use on a pad or a riff for example. It's kind of almost inaudible actually but it just helps to get the balance right between the kick and the bass line and makes room for the kick to come through in the mix. Now in the track actually ever so often the chord progression and the bass line drop down to the E, chord of E minor. So I've programmed that in down here as well. So let's check out the drums next in as the rush comes. And it's actually very very minimal in that department because apart from the kick drum there are only two more sounds going on drums wise. This little clap snare kind of thing here. And then later on in the track we get to hear a hi-hat. And these hats here are actually very interesting because they are sort of proper old school analog type hi-hats. A bit like a roll in CR78 or TR606. And we can recreate those with the Logic Ultra Beat which is not only a sample player, but it's actually a proper analog drum synthesizer using uh, white noise and sine waves, very much in the style of those old drum machines. Default factory setting sounds like this, but I'm gonna load up another bank here, the Pure Analog 01, which comes with a bunch of really nice hi-hats. Let's pick those two closed ones, two because the hats in As The Rush Comes are actually really stereo, so I'm going to pan one of them right and one of them left, and that gives you a really nice stereo result. This one here, made with the white noise generator, can be our open hi-hat. Let's turn it up a bit, and we can use the ADSR to adjust the length and make it a bit longer. So let's record it in. That's the pattern. So let's take a look at what we've got in the piano roll. Looks okay to me. Let's just uh, quantize all the notes. And then it's that four bar hi-hat pattern that we need. So we can loop right now. And then the only other drum element we're gonna need is that clap snare combination. I've placed on, on an audio track here. And then there's the 909 crash symbol. Another quick mixing tip for you. Use a tape delay on the 909 crash symbol because as a sample they're always too short, like this, back from the days when the sampling time was very limited. And with a tape delay, it's going to blend into the track much better. So that's it for part two. In part three, we're going to analyze the counter riff that's in the track and those sweeping string pads. Point Blank Online, you've got two methods of interaction with your tutor. Firstly, you've got the weekly online masterclass, which is in real time. And then also we've got feedback on your assignments, and that's known as DVR. So the online masterclass is a one hour session you get with your tutor every week. You can ask questions about the lesson content and get instant feedback and also demonstrations on the fly from their computer desktop with our streaming technology. 
DVR stands for Direct Video Response, and the concept is really simple. You upload your Ableton Logic or Cubase project file to your tutor, he downloads it, and then pushes record on the screen capturing software, and evaluates your work, so basically giving you one-to-one -one feedback. You see all of the mouse movements and any parameter changes made by your tutor. It's kind of like sitting in the studio over their shoulder watching what they're doing whilst they work. We have found the DVR process has truly revolutionized the way that we teach online and the results speak for themselves. Book your place on the course now by visiting pointblankonline.net.